Number five on this list is the House of Wills, a historic mansion with a deep history and an even deeper haunting. The Atlanta Journal-Constitution says it was built in 1898 by the Germania Trevernian Social Club, according to the website of the current owner, Cleveland artist Eric Freeman. By 1912, it was turned into the Hospital for Immigrants, and by 1920, it housed the Cleveland Hebrew Institute until 1938, prominent African-American entrepreneur and businessman John Walker Wills bought the property in 1942 to use as the location for his second funeral parlor. Wills died in the home in 1971 and his family sold it in 2005. The home fell into disrepair until Freeman bought it in 2010 and started the challenging work of restoring and renovating the property. Freeman said on his website that Wills is believed to be one of the many ghosts that haunt the house and on his Facebook page he posted a scary electronic voice phenomena or EVP recording from the house of what sounds like dozens of spirits from beyond trying to be heard by the living. There have actually been some famous paranormal investigators that have looked into this mansion before and they all came to the same conclusion. It's haunted. A swirling mist will occasionally appear in the mansion, followed by stark temperature changes and a horribly foreboding sensation. Visitors who've stayed at this mansion for extended periods of time say that the visit changed them. That they're sort of constantly on alert after that stay, as if they're hyper aware all of the time. Unless you're trying to feel anxious literally all of the time, I'd book another place to stay if I was you. Number four on this list is the Seely Rose House. This house is located in the Malibu our farm state park which is in Richland County. To this day it's still a working farm which is kind of shocking considering the horrible tragedy that occurred here many years ago. Seely Rose is actually the name of a person, a young girl who lived in the late 1800s. This girl wasn't innocent and sweet as the stereotypical farm gal is. She was evil. There used to be a neighbor house right nearby the Seely Rose house, and in that home lived a young boy around the same age as Seely. Seely developed quite the crush on him and wanted to marry him. It seemed that he liked her as well, and he wanted to do the same. This was all fine and good, except her family wouldn't allow it. Seely's family forbid her from marrying this boy, and this was what caused her to do what she did next. Seely wouldn't accept this answer and took it on herself to get rid of the problem, her family. She poisoned them. Every single one of them. She did it by soaking flypaper in water and then secretly pouring the arsenic-laced water over the cottage cheese she served them, according to Ohio State Park News. They all died soon afterwards, except for her. This was soon found out by the authorities, and Seely, being as young as she was, wasn't sent to jail, but she was put into a mental institute. She was there until she died many, many years later. This home is supposedly still haunted by her and the ghost of her dead family, though. Scratches and eerie cracks are heard throughout all the time. Many people have reported being attacked while they're here as well. Avoid this home at all costs if you find yourself in Ohio. Number three on this list is the Franklin Castle. This house is actually called the Tiedman House, but over the years and from the history it has, it's been nicknamed the Franklin Castle. News 5 Cleveland says, known as the Franklin Castle, this Victorian-style stone house has been a witness to history and withstood the development of the West Side. The stone castle carries an American horror story type history along with it. The house was built between 1881 and 1883 by a German immigrant, Hans Tiedemann. At the turn of the 19th century, Franklin Boulevard was one of the most upscale residential avenues in Cleveland. Franklin Castle was sold in 1896, just one year after his wife Louise died. In the century that followed, the house saw many new owners and new uses. Rumors began to circulate around 1986 that the house house was haunted by the ghosts of Mrs. Tiedman and her daughter Emma who died before the house was even built. So this one is kind of strange because it doesn't seem like anything terrible happened to these two ladies in their death, or at least nothing that I could find. Most times when a spirit haunts a place, it's because they died in a fashion that was very unnatural. That wasn't the case here, and yet they still haunt the castle. It's a nice home to look at from the outside, but definitely not a place that you should be going into. Avoid it altogether. Number two on this list is the Gore Orphanage. Anything that is named the Gore Orphanage is bound 
known to be haunted, and this is no exception. News 5 Cleveland says it's claimed to be one of the most haunted places in Ohio. Located in the countryside of Vermilion, a fire engulfed an old orphanage, burning dozens of people alive, according to long-told tales. For over a century, visitors to the Gore Orphanage have reported strange experiences of glowing lights, chilling cries, and apparitions. Light of Hope was the actual name of the orphanage, and was established by Johann Sprunger and his wife Katrina. They moved to the Vermilion area after their two former businesses in Indiana also caught fire. Throughout the years, children told stories of abuse, neglect, and slave labor conditions. In 1909, an investigation was conducted, but because the state had no laws or regulations pertaining to orphanages, nothing could formally be done to prosecute the couple. While there's no proof that any deaths actually did occur, there's still little doubt about its reputation for being one of the most haunted areas in Ohio. So, not only did this place suffer a horrible tragedy where several people passed away during a massive blaze, but prior to that even happening, there seemed to be so many huge human rights violations going on. I have no idea how back in the day the state wouldn't have had any laws pertaining to orphanages, but it just shows how back then these operations and children were so neglected. Because of all this tragedy and just general sadness, we have what stands today, a horribly haunted, abandoned old orphanage. Now this is on the list of places not to go, and that's because it is actually very dangerous to do so. The ghosts here are upset, and interacting with them will be a huge strain on your mind. However, if you are feeling strong enough, then I actually do encourage you to go. The only way these spirits will finally find peace is if they finally get the attention from the public that they deserve. Something that clearly this place didn't get while it was in operation. And finally, number one on this list is the Ohio State Reformatory. This is one of the most famous spots in all of Ohio. It got the public's attention when it was used as the filming location for the famous movie Shawshank Redemption. It also got the public's attention though when it was claimed to be one of the most haunted spots in the entire state. The Atlanta Journal-Constitution says workers laid the cornerstone on what was known as the intermediate prison between the Boys Industrial School in Lancaster and the Ohio State Penitentiary in Columbus for nonviolent offenders on November 4th, 1886, according to the Mansfield News Journal. The building was used as an operational prison for 94 years until 1981, and during that time, there was a good deal of violence, death, and disease. It's not surprising in the least to find out that this place is haunted. Visitors have reported seeing shadows, hearing strange noises and conversations, and experiencing feelings of anger, dread, and sadness. In 1948, the reformatory's farm boss, his wife, and his daughter were kidnapped and killed by two enraged parolees outside the prison's walls. But the building itself is believed to be haunted by the ghost of Arthur Louis Glattac, the superintendent at the prison from 1935 until 1959, and his wife, Helen. The warden's wife died from an accidental shooting, and several years later, the warden died from a heart attack, according to the Preservation Society. The couple's disembodied voices have been heard in the prison's old superintendent's office. A boy is also believed to haunt the basement, where he was reportedly beaten to death, according to the website Mysterious Heartland. So, yeah, I think it's pretty clear by all of this that this place is not the sort of spot you want to be visiting anytime soon. The amount of violence that this location would have seen is just truly abhorrent, and I'm actually surprised that they were able to get through the entire filming of the Shawshank Redemption with without some serious ghostly interventions. Maybe it's because they had Morgan Freeman in the movie and, well, let's face it, he's kind of an angel. Number five in this list is the Thunderbird Youth Academy. The Thunderbird Youth Academy is located in Pryor and is deeply haunted with the ghosts of students who've long passed. Back in 1942, it suffered a horrible tragedy where a lot of the children staying here passed away. Back then it was an orphanage and it was still years before it would become a military school. It got hit hard with a devastating tornado that the building simply wasn't ready for. Tons of the children who lived there perished due to the storm, and now their ghosts are set to linger here. Stories where people will wake up in their beds and find literally other children lying in them, staring directly at them, are far too common. These stories also don't even factor in one of the most famous ghosts there, Hector. Hector is a young boy who haunts the third platoon building. Hector's story is far more graphic than the other children who died. It's not confirmed, but some say that the cook took Hector's life and did it in a fashion that I can't go into detail on YouTube about. Either way, now his spirit forever haunts this building and all of those who reside in it. 
I personally would never want to go to military school anyways as a kid, but having it be haunted would make it even worse. Number 4 on this list is the Tulsa Theater. It's weird how some places attract ghosts and spirits more than others. Theaters are one of the most prominent spots for paranormal presences, and this theater is no exception. News Oklahoma says, Tulsa Theater, formerly known as Brady Theater, used to be a vaudeville house providing entertainment to audiences. This space went through a lot over the years, including being abandoned and almost destroyed. But after renovations and a name change, the Tulsa Theater reopened. Legend is, the space is haunted by an Italian opera singer named Enrico Caruso. Caruso took in the sights around town while in Tulsa to perform. He wanted to see the oil wells and how they made them, said French. And as they came back, it was raining, it was cold, miserable, and the car broke down. Despite already being sick, Caruso made the journey back on foot in the rain to give what turned out to be his last performance ever. He had a great performance, according to history, French said. It was one of his best, standing ovations in the whole nine yards. Unfortunately, after returning to Italy, Caruso died. French said many say Tulsa caused Caruso's demise and that's why it's believed he haunts the theater. Even Caruso's manager named Tulsa as the reason for his death. But it goes deeper than just Caruso. When it was the Brady Theater, the building is rumored to have played a role in the 1921 Tulsa Race Massacre. I mean, it played a huge role. It housed some of the victims. There are rumors they died inside and some other horrible things that happened to them, French said. We actually captured electronic video phenomena evidence that almost confirms all of the stories there. The Tulsa Race Massacre was a horrible display of hate and racism. On May 31st in 1921, a bunch of white residents who had been given weapons by city officials attacked a bunch of black residents. This incident lasted over 24 hours and saw more than 800 people get injured and at least 36 people die. A horrifying tragedy that never should have occurred. It's no wonder that any place tied to this incident could be haunted. Number 3 on this list is the Hex House. Yeah, that's right guys, this place is literally called the Hex House, so it's no wonder why it's making the list. News Oklahoma says again, so this is something we feature in our serial killer tour. The new Hex House is inspired by the home that used to belong to Carol Ann Smith. French said the original Hex House, located at 10 East 21st Street, has negative energy attached. I mean, the things that she did with her nephew. They were dumping hot water on people that lived in the duplex next to them. There's also that whole history of her keeping those two hostages in the basement and kind of hypnotizing them, putting hexes on them. Yes, it's insane, said French. Claims of windshield wipers or stereos going on while the car is off are frequent if parked nearby. French even says they tested the theory during a tour and claimed she never did it again. We turned the bus off, but then it wouldn't start back up. It wasn't until a lady said she called Carol Ann a bad name and then she apologized. As soon as she was done, the bus came immediately back on, French says. The reason this house is on the killer tour list is due to what went down in 1928, guys. John Blymere, after receiving consultation from a woman named Nellie Knoll, thought that he had been cursed by another man named Nelson Raymer. John and some of his friends broke into the home, which is the Hex House, and then brutally killed Nelson. After they did this, they tried to set the house on fire, but it actually didn't burn. Since then, it's been a hotspot for ghosts, specifically that of Nelson Raymer. Number two on this list is the Stone Lion in Bed and Breakfast. This is definitely not the Airbnb you want to be booking for you and your pals for that relaxing weekend getaway you've been picturing. Travel Oklahoma says, stay at the Stone Lion Inn Bed and Breakfast in Guthrie at your own risk as a mischievous ghost child has been seen and felt throughout the home. The spirit, said to be that of 8 year old Irene Hewton, has been known to squeeze the toes of sleeping guests or even crawl into bed with them. The eerie tap 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 of a child's footsteps has also been heard leading from the second floor to the third. According to legend, the 8,000 square foot home was where the child met her fate when a nurse her with cough syrup containing them. The family later moved on, but little Irene refused to leave. After the Houston family moved out, the home changed into a boarding house and then a funeral home. 
Paranormal investigative teams have encountered several other ghosts, including a strong male entity who lingers in the basement where the morgue once was. Through the years of people staying here, there have been tons of reports of sightings and interactions with ghostly entities. As mentioned, it's pretty normal to be visited by Irene, the ghost of the young girl who passed here. A bit of a rarer encounter is that of a ghostly music box though. The owner Becky has come out and said, One of my guests just the other day came out of this room and said, All night long I heard this music box. Now it's unclear whether one of the ghosts was playing this music box or if the box just sort of started on its own, but that would definitely be enough to keep me awake if I was that guest. Pictures, videos, and voice recordings have all been captured here by paranormal investigators many times. It was first investigated by a paranormal specialist 18 years ago, and since then it's been a hotspot for all ghost hunters alike to check out. Unless you're well versed in dealings with spirits, I'd pick a different Airbnb for you and your buddies. And number one on this list is Guthrie's Boys Home. This site started out as an orphanage in 1923 when it was built. Now becoming an orphan would truly be a horrible experience that I can't even begin to understand, but I can guarantee you that it would have been far worse if you got sent to this orphanage. That's because of the horrible atrocities committed here. There is no denying that the maid who worked here back then was sick. Mentally sick, deranged to a point where she felt a desire to these young orphans. It's believed that she would often abuse these innocent children in any number of ways. Now this isn't confirmed, but these are rumors. It's also thought that she even took the life of a few people while she was working here and made it look like an accident. This all culminated one day when she finally took her own life by jumping out of the bell tower and falling to her death. This has obviously led to some spiritual presences staying behind. Lucky for all of us, it's not the spirit of this sick old maid who died. However, as sad as it is, it's the spirits of some of these children here who were wronged. There is apparently one girl who appears to visitors and begs for safety. Crying and screaming children can be heard echoing throughout the building at all hours of the day. The sounds of little feet running up and down the halls are regularly reported as well. Believe it or not, this isn't enough to drive people away though because it's a popular wedding spot. Definitely not the area I would choose to get married if it was up to me though. Coming in at number 5 we have Padre Hotel. The Padre Hotel located in Bakersfield has a reputation for being a terrifying place to stay. Many admit they were skeptical at first but the hotel lived up to the paranormal stories. The hotel was first opened in 1928. Since then it's seen many tragedies take place within its walls. The local archives hold many stories of those who have lost their lives there. These guests now haunt the hotel, leaving behind signs that they still stay here to this day. There have been so many incidents here, it's sometimes unclear who was contacting the guests. In the 1950s there was a large fire where many perished. Some say that in spots around the hotel you feel an intense panic and sense of terror come over you, as if you yourself were trapped in the blaze. The upper floors are said to have the most paranormal activity, in particular the seventh floor. It is said to be a hotbed for unexplained paranormal happenings. Many guests even request to stay on this floor to see if they can experience these terrors for themselves. The hotel's general manager has shared some of the terrifying experiences she has had there. She said one night while she was making her rounds, she opened a door to a closet. Suddenly, she had an overwhelming feeling of cold and immediate adrenaline. She said her hair was standing up on her arm. Suddenly, the door slammed and she ran as fast as she could out of the hotel. She said she told a couple of people who found her outside. She was clearly frightened and everyone wanted to know what she saw. She said since then she has rarely told the story. She has worked there for over 10 years and has never felt fear like this before. Others have witnessed reoccurring ghosts, stories that fit together from strangers who have never met. One common sight the hotel is a man stood on the roof. Many see him as they first arrive at the hotel thinking he might be doing work on the roof. They think nothing of it. He has been seen many times by different guests. Those who ask what he is doing up there are told no one is allowed on the roof after a tragic accident had occurred at the hotel years ago. Many believe it is the man's ghost who keeps appearing to guests as a warning to not enter the hotel. In at number 4 we have Alcatraz.
Alcatraz Island. Alcatraz Island is one of the most notorious prisons in history and can be found on the San Francisco Bay. Before it became a federal penitentiary, it was discovered by Spanish naval officer and explorer Juan Manuel de Ayala, who founded the island in 1775 and built several small buildings and other minor structures on the island. In 1850, President Millard Fillmore ordered Alcatraz Island to be set aside specifically as a United States military reservation for military purposes following the Mexican American War. In 1861, the island held hundreds of Civil War prisoners. Then, in 1934, the prison opened and operated until March 1963, and as of lately, has become a major tourist attraction. Alcatraz is the site of a now abandoned federal prison, the oldest operating lighthouse on the west coast of the United States, and early military fortifications. Landmarks on the island include the main cell house, dining hall, lighthouse, the ruins of the warden's house, social hall, parade ground, recreation yard, water tower and other small buildings. Some of the most infamous criminals were kept at Alcatraz over the years, and due to the strong currents around the island and the ice cold water temperatures, it made escaping nearly impossible. Some of the most notorious criminals held at Alcatraz include Al Capone, George Machine Gun Kelly and Bumpy Johnson. Contrary to popular belief, it was in fact possible to escape and swim to shore. Extremely hard, but possible. During the 29 years of operation, the penitentiary claimed that no prisoner successfully escaped, but many questioned that. A total of 36 prisoners made 14 different escape attempts, 23 were caught alive, 6 were shot and killed during their escape two drowned, and five are listed as missing and presumed drowned, but that is highly debated. Many believe of the five missing, all or at least some of them were able to make it to land and were never caught. Due to the amount of history and deaths in and around the island, many believe there are dozens of spirits that roam in the abandoned buildings and even in death are unable to escape the island. Alcatraz is a popular tourist attraction because of its ghost sightings, weird occurrences and history, and they offer daily tours to see the island and its buildings. In at number three we have the Queen Mary. The iconic Queen Mary ship is located in Long Beach and is one of the most haunted destinations in the United States. The ship was first christened in 1934 by Queen Mary herself, and it was retired more than three decades later. It has since been converted into a hotel where guests can sleep surrounded by the original wood panelling and portholes. If you do plan on staying on the ship, you may not be the only guest here though. There are multiple stories of different spirits that haunt the ship. There are so many different rooms on the ship that are haunted by many different ghosts, including the Mauritania room, the Mayfair room, Boiler Room Number 4 and the First Class Swimming Pool, just to name a few. State Room B340 in particular was a problem long before the Queen Mary became a hotel. In 1948, British third class passenger Walker J. Adamson passed away in the room and the details of his death are unknown. Later in 1966, a woman staying in the room reported that she had awoken when the bed covers were pulled off her and she saw a man standing at the foot of her bed. She screamed and rang for the steward but the man quickly vanished into thin air. Years Years later, guests staying in the room reported hearing someone knocking on the door in the middle of the night, seeing bathroom lights mysteriously turn on, and even the hotel's maids would often find the bathroom water running, even when no one had stayed in the room for days. Another area that is a paranormal hotspot is Shaft Alley or Hatch Door Number 13, and it was the site of a gruesome accident where a crewman was crushed to death. His ghost is regularly seen around the area now. People often report hearing the sound of someone running behind them and whistling, while others have noticed that spots of grease that appear to look like fingerprints appear on their face. And some have even seen a figure of a bearded man in blue overalls that looks like a crewman. Due to the amount of paranormal activity, many ghost enthusiasts, investigators and TV shows frequently visit the ship to stay and partake in the ghost tours they offer. In at number two, we have the Roosevelt Hotel. The Roosevelt Hotel in Hollywood was made famous due to the number of celebrities, past and present, who have stayed there, including one of the most famous women in history, Marilyn Monroe, who stayed at the hotel for two years early in her career and posed for her first commercial photography shoot by the hotel's pool. Many believe her spirit, among others, still linger through the halls of the hotel. Some of the most famous people in history have stayed at this notorious hotel, including Charlie Chaplin, Shirley Temple, Prince, Ernest Hemingway, Brad Pitt, and Angelina Jolie, just to name a few. The hotel opened in 1927 and is the oldest continually operating hotel in Los Angeles and is named after the 26th President of the United States, Theodore Roosevelt. It is a staple in Hollywood due to it being on Hollywood Boulevard and being so close to the Hollywood Walk of Fame and the famous Chinese Theatre. The first ever Academy Award ceremony was held at 
the hotel on May 16th, 1929, inside the Blossom Ballroom. It was a private ceremony open only to the Academy members, with a total of 270 people in attendance. At the time, the Oscar nickname for the award had not yet been invented. It would be introduced four years later. Many guests have experienced paranormal activities while visiting the hotel, like feeling cold spots, receiving mysterious phone calls, and capturing orbs in their photographs. There are many rumours of hauntings and ghosts at the hotel involving celebrities who have previously stayed there like Montgomery Cliff, Carol Lombard and Errol Flynn. Other stories involve a little girl in a blue dress named Caroline that have been seen by multiple hotel guests and employees. Montgomery Cliff's spirit has been blamed for patting guests shoulders and watching the maids who clean his old room 928, where he stayed for a total of 3 months while filming From Here to Eternity. Carol Lombard has also been spotted floating around the upper floors. The most famous spirit of the hotel is of course Marilyn Monroe. Many people believe she still roams the hotel and can be found in her old room 1200, and many have witnessed her ghostly figure in the mirror. This hotel is both famous and notorious and if you're brave enough you can stay in these celebrities old rooms. And finally, in at number one, we have the Cecil Hotel. The Cecil Hotel in downtown Los Angeles has been known by many to be haunted hotel, but gained massive media and global attention when the popular Netflix documentary came out regarding the disappearance of Elisa Lam, who went missing while staying at the hotel. The case was extremely mysterious and made many question the sinister background of this notorious hotel. The hotel was built in 1924 as a destination for business travelers and tourists. It flourished throughout the 1940s, but saw a decline as the nearby Skid Row became extremely overpopulated and drugs and crime ran rapid. As many as 10,000 homeless people lived within a 4 mile radius from the hotel. For decades this hotel had a reputation for violence and death due to the number of mysterious cases that have happened throughout the years at the Cecil. The first documented case of someone taking their own life occurred in 1927 when Percy Cook shot himself while inside his hotel room after failing to reconcile with his wife and child. The next one occurred in 1931 and more happened throughout the 1940s and 50s. Not only have many people taken their own life in this hotel, but many unresolved murders and mysterious deaths have also happened here. Many people believe all these occurrences make this one of the most haunted places in California due to all the souls still roaming around the hotel. One of the most famous true crime cases is that of the Black Dahlia, and it was confirmed in 2015 that Elizabeth Short was seen drinking at the Cecil's bar in the days before her notorious and unsolved murder in 1947. In the 1980s, the hotel had been the residence of one of the most famous serial killers of all time, Richard Ramirez, nicknamed the Night Stalker. Throughout the 1980s, he ran rapid in his killing spree, and he was a regular presence on the Skid Row area. And according to a hotel clerk who claims to have spoken to Richard, he had stayed at the hotel for weeks before his capture in 1985. Another serial killer, Austrian man Jack Underwaker, stayed at the Cecil in 1991, possibly sought to copy Ramirez's crimes. While staying there, he had killed at least three women. An astonishing number of people have lost their lives at this notorious hotel, and many deaths remain unsolved to this day. When Elisa Lam's case was made public, it caused even more confusion and questions about what really goes on at this hotel. The Cecil Hotel is known to be one of the most haunted places not only in California, but throughout the world.